Never know if that's a good one. Uh, All right. Well, it's 10 o'clock. Let's get started. Uh, good morning. Um, I'd like to call the uh, Town of Sydney Emergency Planning Committee meeting to order. And uh, to begin, uh, we respectfully acknowledge that today's meeting is being held on the uh, traditional territory of the Wasanich First Nations. So can, uh, can I have a motion from someone to uh, adopt today's agenda? Oh, there we go. There you go, Paige. You can, you can, you can fudge the rest. It's all in favor. That's good. And uh, also a motion to adopt the April 21st Emergency Planning Committee meeting uh, minutes if there's no errors or omissions from, from anyone. I see a raft of hands virtually, I'm sure. There we go, good. All right. Um, I think what we'll do, there's some new business to discuss, so we'll quickly uh, run through some of the old business. Um, We'll start off with the uh, senior care homes and I'll just uh, pass that over to Deputy Harmon uh, this time just to give us a brief update on how they're doing. Thanks Chief. Uh, yeah, all the homes are doing, uh, doing very well. Uh, I am still maintaining weekly contact. Uh, any of the complex care facilities have, uh, they've all received their second dose and the assistant and independent uh, are all scheduled. So that is, uh, that's ongoing as we speak. Excellent. Um, and Mike, it comes up a little bit later on the agenda as well. Um, you can probably just deal with it uh, all in one now is just provide an update on the status of our evacuation uh, grant and, and where we're doing that and how we're making out with that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I have uh, met with Paige and Jim Lamort and his assistant Molly Rose uh, a couple of times now. Uh, we did have a meeting last week with the RCMP Public Works um, and some various other stakeholders to start to look at, you know, strategic and tactical evacuations. What are some things that we're trying to accomplish? Uh, what we're looking to take away once we have the evacuation route grant completed. Uh, I'm going to sit down tomorrow with uh, Sergeant Conley and go over some more detailed things. And then we've got another meeting planned on June 23rd to bring public works in and really start looking at what uh, what resources we would need, uh, whether it be a weather event, seismic event, or anything that we could be uh, tasked with. So that's where we are there uh, in the early stages, first couple of weeks meeting with Jim, uh, but we're moving in the right direction and uh, we hope to have something uh, completed by uh, early September. Marvelous. I, I just have, oh, well, I'll uh, defer to Councillor O'Keefe and then I'll jump in. Okay, thanks. Now, I'm just wondering, is this something that we always, we would also um, confer with um, North Saanich on as well in terms of sharing resources or, or routes and, and things out of the peninsula? Yeah, Councillor O'Keefe, something we have uh, looked at is, uh, is resource sharing. Um, obviously, looking at public work staff being able to assist us in the event of uh, closing roads or moving traffic, you know, down Mills Road to West Saanich, um, as well as equipment and things like that. So we've talked about barricades, delineators, things like that. Um, so we have talked about that. Um, North Saanich did work with Jim Lamort just a couple of years ago and updated their evacuation route uh, planning. So we're just, we're catching up, um, but we will be cons uh, touching base with them and making sure the plans align. Yeah, okay, great, thanks. Marvelous. Well, that was stole my thunder there, but that's okay. I, that's uh, good stuff. Um, the next one would just be our um, the Mary Winspear and the uh, COVID vaccination site. Uh, look out the window. There's no lineup right now, but uh, that changes on a regular basis. Um, 5:20 today. I'm excited. I'm going for my second shot. I do. Uh, Mike and I do go over there occasionally as kind of liaisons. Uh, from the town just to you know assist in kind of setting it up and checking in and speaking with uh, kind of the director of facilities as well as the head nurse and it's very well organized they're very happy uh, they don't they're not really ha have a want for anything so um, yeah it's a it's a success uh, it's going well and uh, I don't know if anyone else has any comments on it but I think it's uh, it's definitely served the community and a whole raft communities well so I'm I'm happy about how that we were able to get that in in place and. and you know, where our numbers are uh, right or at near the top for 
uh, vaccinated communities. And in general, we look at our, our COVID numbers, our uh, daily case counts, ICU uh, admissions and hospital stays are all declining. So we'll talk about that a bit later, but it's, uh, we can finally say we're kind of coming out of, uh, we're coming out of this, which is, is very positive, so. Uh, yes, sir. Do you know if, if Winspear is planning to reopen for other events or are they pretty much committed to this for uh, the time being? It's my understanding, and I, I'm happy to have Mike jump in here, is that um, they will be using the, the theater and, and the other kind of side and they have been actually even during this. I know because my daughter uh, was participating in you know in, in dance competitions, although it was all kind of filmed and there was nobody in attendance because it was a couple of weeks ago. But they have been using the theater um, in parallel, and I would assume it's a bad word that as um, the restart uh, iterations allow for greater gatherings inside, that they'll use um, kind of both sides in parallel. Um, as, as they're permitted. Mike, you probably can detail that and advise if that's correct. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's my understanding. It's my understanding that the Mary Winspear Center and uh, the Health Authority have an agreement till September uh, to keep the vaccination side uh, open. So I don't think we'll see anything in the big hall uh, throughout the summer. There you go. All right. Um, I'll maybe just shift over to Allison to see if she has or Corey if they have any exciting news on sidewalk cafe or off street parking permits. I think it's pretty quiet on that front, but uh, are we all good there? Yeah, I can speak to that. I just talked to Tara in engineering who said there really hasn't been any new applications since we last talked about this. Um, she said the people that had been interested in just finding out more information haven't followed up with an application. So there's no pending ones to be issued now. Sure. And um, it's probably more, uh, it's a little early days, but as we kind of get into the fall and I perhaps, Allison, just remind me of, do these permits fall off at a certain date or they have to be renewed or is it a one year council or, or a kind of term for these or a, a term for these, these permits or, or do you think these business owners are just going to expect this is the new normal or, or, or how do we how do we think this is going to go? They're annual permits, so they would have to renew for 2022. Okay. Yeah. Next yeah, year. That as well, Brett, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, we did get a, a, a email from the LCRB yesterday as well, stating that they've extended the um, the uh, authorization for liquor licenses to use patio spaces. And there was a bit of uh, wording in there about it being permanent, um, extended, I think, till June 2022, but maybe making some of it permanent or something. So I'm not sure what's happening there, but uh, it's been extended again anyway. There was an article uh, just I read yesterday about that as well, Corey, indicating that, uh, that uh, they are looking at, uh, I think, the possibility of, um, of um, establishing it uh, more permanently, but I still think that the onus is going to be on the municipalities to look at, I don't know, applications maybe when they come in or, you know, they're going to have to review their own, their own bylaws, their own policies around this as well. So uh, the, uh, the tricky one seems to be with the, the food primary liquor licenses mm -hmm. uh, where municipal approval is not required. Just we only approve the uh, council only approves the liquor primary ones. And uh, the only issues we've had, of course, have been with food primary ones. So anyway, we'll see how that develops. Well, it's uh, perhaps the, the legacy of COVID will be Zoom meetings and beer on sidewalks. So if that's the worst that we have to deal with, that's okay. So um, I have no issues with the street market at Mary Winspear. I've come in in a few Sundays. It's created no access issues for, uh, or egress issues for fire or ambulance. Um, I've had no issues or concerns. I don't know if anyone else has, but I think it's 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 positive. Um, it looked like they had a fairly was busy the couple of times that I've been there, but there was uh, a fair amount of directional signage and and you know mass compliance and all those type of things that were going on. And popped in and had lunch, so you know looked at some of the vendors. So I have no issues. I don't know if anyone else uh, does. I think it's a it's a good workaround under the current kind of context. I don't know if anyone else has any concerns 
um, about how the street market or parking lot market is going for this year. Are they keeping the market on the uh, Winspear footprint? I would say yes. Uh, yeah, I would. I would say yes. That's correct. I I haven't seen it kind of, you know, fold over into uh, go over uh, onto the other side. Um, I mean, like I've only been to a, a couple of them for you know short durations, but I again I haven't seen a, an issue there. So, Mike, you've been here a little bit more on those Sundays. Have you noticed anything or? No, I've just noticed it contained the the one west parking lot there. There you go. Good. Uh, Chief. Yes. When you have um, when you have been down there, do you notice sort of what are the what are the occupancy numbers like within the within the market footprint itself? Are we you know would you at any given time are we talking you know hundreds or are we talking less than that or? I can say pretty confidently it was probably at least around a hundred. It was it was it was, it was definitely. Uh, it was, a, it was a good number of people and, and again there weren't huge um huge numbers of you know people close there was kind of like little family units and and pods there weren't you know people were still respectful and respect uh, in regards to separating separations of uh, lineups or food vendors and the like so i, I really wasn't uh, overly concerned and every, is everyone wearing masks do you know like did most they, people wear I, this was again probably three weeks ago um, that I'm going back, but yes, I didn't. I didn't. You know, there might have been people off along the fence line. There, there were eating. I mean, a lot of people I think were going there to to um, access food vendors, so a lot of people were eating or drinking. But I would say the vast majority of people who weren't eating and drinking had masks on. Do that. Understanding yeah. that uh, all vendors must wear masks, and they do have. Uh, when I walked through, there was lots of signage recommending the uh, the use of face coverings while uh, in the market footprint. Hmm. There we go. Any other old business from anyone? Nothing. That's exciting. Good. Um, what we'll do is now we'll just kind of uh, transition to new business and I'm just going to pass it over to uh, our CAO and he'll provide a bit of a, a brief synopsis on um, the reopening plan for municipal buildings uh, and how we're going to, uh, you know, kind of ease restrictions in municipal buildings and also discuss our uh, policy or, or thoughts as um, in respect to continuation of uh, remote working. So I'll pass it over to, uh, to Randy. Yeah, thanks, Chief. So, um, the EOC uh, talked about uh, this, um, our EOC level one discussed this maybe a few weeks back about uh, when, the, when the restart plan was first uh, announced by the province, uh, what we'd be looking at in terms of a, a, a potential reopening plan for municipal facilities, um, in particular the town hall. Um, I'd also uh, participated at the, at the same time um, in a, in a call from uh, um, all the administrators uh, were on the same call uh, discussing uh, their respective uh, reopening plans and and where we were in terms of in terms of our different thoughts on uh, on timing so it was good that we uh, were able to to share that um, uh, for the most part um, the elements that we discussed anyways it seemed that uh, that uh, um, most administrators and their and their respective local governments were on the same page around uh, around timing for uh, for reopenings based on the restart plan. So with with respect to uh, to Sydney, um, the first uh, the first real order of business is to take a look at our um, current COVID safety plan, and uh, I believe there's a requirement uh, within the restart plan that. Uh, um, we have to have uh, required to have an updated COVID safety plan by uh, by July 1st. So that's one of the first orders of business right now is to uh, um, take a uh, fairly comprehensive look at our at our current COVID safety plan and make sure that uh, we're updating that based on any potential reopening. Uh, um, Opportunities that uh, that uh, uh, we're that are presenting uh, uh, that are presenting being presented to us. So, so we're 
in the process of updating that COVID safety plan. And um, basically what we're looking at right now, the, the town hall is, uh, is open to the public essentially by, by appointment only. So on a very limited basis, people make appointments. Uh, we do take some one-offs uh, uh, and allow people to come in and, uh, and uh, without an appointment, but again, it's on a, it's on a, limited, it's on a limited basis really. So um, what, what we're looking at is uh, reopening the town hall to the public um, uh, following uh, uh, to our tax time period, which, uh, which essentially ends on July 5th. And uh, this is pretty much in line with, with other municipal organizations. They're looking at doing the same thing, waiting until the tax period uh, ends. Uh, before before opening up uh, to 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 the public, um, so July fifth, uh, the doors uh, would be would be open, and again, this would be embedded within our, our safety plan. Uh, we'd still have a requirement um, to uh, for the public to wear masks when they uh, when they enter uh, the building, and uh, we'd still be looking at. Uh, maintaining our current uh, uh, occupancy limits within, uh, within the building as well. The foyer is a, is a challenging area, both, uh, both in front of the development services desk, as well as the engineering counter, and uh, as, well as, as well as finance. So there's limitations in terms of our, our total occupancy in those areas. Um, so again, limiting that as well as ensuring physical distancing um, when, uh, when people uh, do come in uh, to the town hall. So again, the milestone, uh, the milestone date there is, uh, is uh, July 5th when we're opening up to the public. Um, also uh, in July, which is basically, I think, considered step three of the, restart, of the province's restart plan, will also be... Uh, looking at uh, uh, encouraging um, um, the potential for council members to uh, return, all council members to return to the council chambers. So uh, uh, we're still limiting the occupancy within, we'd still be limiting the occupancy within the council chambers. And I think right now it's a, it's a, it's a, low, it's a max, maximum uh, number of people of, of, of 10, I believe, that, uh, that are permitted in there right now with council and, uh, and uh, the support staff that attend council meetings. Uh, we wouldn't be opening up to the public, however. Uh, we'd be, uh, it would just be councillors and, as I said, a few support staff, so limiting it to, to, uh, to 10 persons. Um, and again, if, um, if, if some councillors are still um, still wish to uh, to um, attend via Zoom in in July, uh, from our perspective, I think that's fine too. But uh, again, most municipalities are looking at having all of their council members come back to the chambers uh, um, um, in uh, in July. Um, with respect to the public um, attending council meetings. Uh, again, um, we'd be looking at, uh, given the potential numbers that we'd, we'd, we'd possibly have, um, and, uh, and I think um, inside, inside a building you're limited to, uh, for organized, organized meetings, and correct me if I'm wrong, Allison, is it 50 persons um, in, um, in July? Yes. Oh, no, yeah. July? Sorry, I've got it open right here. Um... At step three in July, it just says um, increased capacity at both indoor and outdoor organized gatherings. Doesn't say a number. Mm -hmm. um, personal gatherings return to return to usual for indoor and outdoor personal gatherings. So much larger numbers in July. The current numbers now, as of June fifteenth, for indoor organized gatherings is up to fifty people right now. Up to up to fifty. Yeah. 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 For an so, indoor seated gathering or an outdoor organized gathering up to 50. Okay. Okay. So we'd be looking at uh, opening the, the council chambers to the public in, uh, in September. So the, uh, the basically the, the, the final step to the restart plan is when we'd be uh, um, allowing that again, uh, because it's going to be very challenging to, uh, to, uh, to control the, uh, the numbers otherwise. Um, and then finally, with respect to uh, um, 
a, a sort of staff returning to work. Right now, we have um, a very small number of staff that uh, that uh, are working from home uh, uh, in various departments, and uh, a lot of the departments sometimes will have a, a, a basically the, the staff will trade off the times that they're working here and the the times that they're working they're working from home. Um, but uh, we'll be transitioning back to a having everyone come back to the town hall to uh, to work and uh, and the effective date for that would uh, would also be um, in the beginning of September for having all staff uh, um, come back and uh, and be working out of uh, the respective offices. Um, there's a lot. There was a lot of discussion at uh, the administrators group about about um, staff uh, working from home and the potential of having that uh, continue uh, post uh, post COVID. Um, and 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 like I said, it was quite quite mixed amongst the amongst the administrators. Um, there is a there is a sentiment that uh, that um, that. The whole work from home uh, component has been positive. It's been successful. It's it's worked well. Um, there's been um, there's been levels of efficiency that have been able to be maintained throughout uh, throughout that uh, that work from home uh, period. Um, there's lots in the media right now about uh, about um, large employers continuing the practice as a potential. Um, at a local government level, though, um, especially in in union environments with uh, with collective agreements and and that sort of thing, um, um, there's also a strong feeling that we need to look carefully at those uh, collective agreements before uh, and 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 look at sort of through bargaining, looking at uh, um, how how we might integrate that as a possibility if the union brings it forward. So that's something that uh, that. Um, you know we're willing to look at, but uh, but it is important that uh, that we be mindful of uh, of uh, of the collective agreements and uh, and um, the various clauses that are contained within those within those agreements because there's a large impact uh, overall on uh, on a number of aspects of uh, of uh, of our current agreements. Um, the CRD, as an example, is looking at again. They're recalling all of their staff, and uh, and they're the CAO there is quite quite adamant about uh, about opening up the entire collective agreement or the requirement to open up the entire collective agreement to look at that before work from home is potentially uh, potentially considered or instituted. Um, but um, from his perspective, he's also looking at at um, um, the possibility of amending uh, a current um, policy that they have uh, regarding uh, regarding uh, um, flexibility for staff and uh, to to potentially to potentially work from home during unique circumstances. And these would be sort of at a management level deciding uh, what those unique circumstances are and uh, and establishing it by policy. So uh, work from home, for example, during during snow events or work from home um, if an employee isn't um, isn't feeling well but uh, but isn't so sick that uh, they potentially want to miss work uh, could they potentially work from home if they have the capabilities uh, to do so at at home you know those kinds of things um, so um, the administrator said we would look at we would look at a policy uh, like that as a as a possibility so. So that pretty much covers the gambit in terms of uh, in terms of where we are. Like I said, we're currently reviewing the COVID safety plan, and uh, and uh, once that's uh, once that's in place, uh, then uh, we're going to communicate that with uh, with uh, with town staff so that they're aware of uh, aware of where we're going uh, um, into uh, into July. Thanks, Randy. Is there any questions from anyone in the group? Uh, in respect to uh, respect to our initial plans for the next couple of months, there you go. It's all all good. Councilor Oki. Oh, I didn't see her. Sorry. Um, th thanks for that, Randy. A uh, couple things. One, just a comment, and, and then a question. 
Um, I, in regards to the uh, uh, bringing the working from home into the collective agreement, I guess my only comment or my concern would be um, by depending on what goes in the collective agreement, my yeah. concern would be about CAOs um, losing flexibility in terms of what they thought was appropriate for their municipality and their staff and the services they provide. And I guess concern about uh, getting into disagreements with the union about somebody wanting to work from home and the CAO says no, and then there's a grievance and all that kind of stuff. So um, I, I kind of like leaving it as open as so CAOs have more, more discretion, but. For sure. <laughs> and I mean, it's something that the onus would be on the, um, the onus would be on the um, respective unions to bring this forward as part of uh, as part of uh, um, when the agreement comes up for collective bargaining, and uh, so it would be their responsibility to bring it forward if they want to bring it on behalf of their members. Uh, and uh, it's also important to note that um, that um, even though um, a lot of a lot of uh, the municipalities. Um, belong and utilize the Greater Victoria Labor Relations Association to bargain on our behalf, et cetera, and, and, uh, and help us through the bargaining process. We all have our own collective, our own individual collective agreements. And, uh, and so from our perspective, yeah, it has to work for, uh, for uh, the individual municipalities. We're all unique. We all have different uh, uh, staffing components. We all have our own unique uh, requirements as well. So yeah, we want to make sure that we're able to maintain, a, you know, a level of uh, autonomy when we're we're talking about these things, and it fundamentally has to work for the organization. So, yeah, appreciate. We're always points. we're always going to insist on a a clause about as according to operational needs, which right. should give us the um, that latitude to, to the flex time. It'll be by policy, and there'll be some reasonable. Um, control mechanism so that the organization can meet its operating needs. Yeah, and thanks for that. I didn't realize that um, each municipality has its own. I thought it, it, was, it was broader than that. So thanks for clarifying that. And then just the other question I was wondering. So when you're looking at the, um, the reopening plan, is, are you, or maybe you have already looking at um, retaining some of the practices that have been put in place like I'm wondering, like with online services or online appointments, are there things that have been instituted as a result of COVID, but you found that, hey, this actually works pretty good and maybe we'll continue to do those things? Yeah, I mean, um, I think that, uh, yeah, it's a, good, it's a good point. And uh, um, I think there are some things that, uh, that um, Practices that uh, that we've developed through through COVID, uh, in particular related to uh, to online services that um, you know have uh, have been really really positive and uh, and I know uh, I know um, you know uh, tax payments etc. I, I think that's been highly successful in terms of getting people to uh, to, uh, to to pay online utility billing, paying online, that sort of thing, right? So those 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 have been positive. Another element, um, and it'll it'll uh, come forward when we review our um, our um, our council procedures bylaw, and we get to, we get together to discuss that is going to be this whole aspect of uh, of um, virtual participation. You know, uh, um, as an example, by by the uh, the public, right at uh, at council meetings, do we, uh, you know, um, do we still want to, uh, as an organization, have um, have um, public participation via Zoom, or or at least the option of public participation via Zoom versus um, public participation in attendance at the council chambers, um, and uh, and um, allowing for that. Uh, you know, it's it's um, it's worked. We've we've uh, we've worked out the kinks, I think, really really well. Um, you know, um, in dealing with uh, um, how we manage our council meetings uh, um, in a, in a COVID environment via Zoom. Uh, uh, Sandy and 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 um, the IT department had pretty much dialed it in, and uh, we 
we've got you know really good positive feedback about uh, about um, how accessible it is you know in terms of our council meetings uh, um, through the use of that so you know that's something I think um, we we should be we should be we should be looking at for sure yeah yeah, yeah thank you well we've been looking to expand our um, online <clears throat> transactional functionality for years, but COVID actually is the first thing that really accelerated it. So we're not never going back. We're, uh, we're appreciative that COVID resulted in a lot more uptake than we typically get in a, in a year. Yeah, just, just another couple of comments moving forward on the restart. I'm just wondering about um, the signage we have in the streets, the additional washroom cleanings we're doing on at uh, noontime uh, on the wor regular working days and on the weekends as well. Um, certainly operationally, it's a bit of a challenge. Uh, so just wondering if we could look at when we're going to drop that extra service. I'm, I'm thinking maybe after July 1st. Yeah, thanks, Brian. So yeah, again, those are those are elements, and I should have mentioned those. Those will those will definitely be elements that we look at as part of the uh, as part of the uh, review of the safety plan. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, uh, those kinds of things. We're going to be reviewing our occupancy limits. We're going to be reviewing our cleaning protocol within uh, within uh, within our facilities. Uh, um, we'll. Um, um, have some comments on 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 maintaining or mandating a requirement with respect to mask wearing in in uh, in, in the building at least uh, at least uh, until uh, until September. So there will be different aspects, and we'll cover the full spectrum in the uh, in the safety plan. Thank you. Other comments? Right. No, I would I would just add that uh, you know you study. Um, disaster responses over the last hundred years and, and disaster kind of necessitate and, and drives innovation. And you will see lots of things arriving, uh, arising out of, you know, this that'll, that'll stick and, and improve our, um, the way we deliver service to residents. Um, <clears throat> there'll be lots of other things. I know there's a bunch of, um, businesses and local governments that are looking at, uh, you know, maintaining to some extent their enhanced cleaning protocols um, based on some very, you know, in internally, not in, in public spaces, but internally in workspaces, um, it's eliminated the seasonal flu. You know, is that, is that additional investment in, in cleaning or, you know, mass wearing or that, um, you know, if you're a private business, um, you know, from a, a bottom line perspective, either you're investing an extra X, Y, Z number in, in that, but your um, absentee uh, and lost revenue and lost, you know, billable hours factor has gone down to the point where it pays for itself three or four times over. Um, there's lots of those things that are being looked at that will be kind of legacy outputs of COVID that we're, we're not aware of yet. So I think we just need to keep an open mind and, and kind of go with that. But I, I think, you know, we'll, there'll be a lot of good things that, that come out of this unfortunate event that will, you know, make our organizations uh, better and healthier. Um, moving on, uh, just as we kind of transition back to some sense of normalcy, which I think, you know, based on everything continuing to go as planned, um, could be, you know, the first or second week of September, I just want to kind of set as a primer. Uh, I don't have a lot of you know details, but we can refocus on tasks that um, this committee was had identified prior to COVID becoming kind of the all-encompassing focus, um, which is understandable. Um, just as a as a primer, I did have uh, Paige provide um, basically a synopsis of the the restart um, plan. Uh, that was detailed on the 15th. I page you sent that out to, to all the recipients of this meeting, just as a reference. And it, it does detail, um, as per the 15th, what the uh, travel restrictions, uh, recommendations, how many people uh, can be in, uh, in buildings, et cetera, et cetera, just as a reference document. And as we move forward, um, I'll have Paige provide little synopsis for this group just to refer to, um, just for informational basis. So. You know, our, our kind of focus pre-COVID or some of the tasks that we had on, on our list were 
um, our, you know, our continued application and going through the steps to become a, a resilient uh, city um, as detailed by the United Nations disaster risk reduction um, cohort. Um, we're, we're getting closer. Obviously, we, we probably would have been there if, if, if COVID hadn't, uh, you know, focused all of our efforts on, on that. Um, but again, uh, the fact now that we ha have access to um, an internal climate action coordinator and there's a large climate action component to um, our application. Um, so we're in the, in the early steps of including our, our climate action coordinator to assist with our application. So I think that it's worked out very well. Um, emergency drinking water, uh, something that we've been working on for quite a while and we'll, you know, dust off that file and, and work again with engineering and, and public works and budgets and see what our what our best, uh, our best options are moving forward with that. Um, and then, of course, we had the uh, Auditor General um, audit recommendations. Uh, there's a list of recommendations that came out of um, the audit findings. So a lot of those, I'd say probably 50% of those have been kind of attended to or in the process to be intended to, but there's still a list that, that we need to, to get back on and, and, and put into our work plans. Um, and then the, the, the event um, planning and uh, kind of uh, permissions bylaw. So when someone wants to plan an event, there's a very kind of um, there's a hierarchy. It goes through a, kind of a tiered response of how um, if someone wants to plan an event that it's it's safe, it's not is does it require um, public work staff? Is it going to be a cost to them, et cetera, et cetera? And just kind of streamline and modernize um, that process. So that's on the on the docket as well. So these are all things that um, as we kind of get past September and kind of do a, a thorough after after action plan or after action review of of our entire COVID response, these will be our um, what we'll be really focusing on kind of in fall winter um, as we move forward. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there as a primer. Um, I don't know if there's any comments specific to that, but that's kind of where we're, where we're going. Um, yes, Councillor O'Keefe. Uh, thanks. Um, so in regards to the after action review, I, I remember we, I think um, you did give council a report, maybe it was at the, in late fall of last year on some of some of the things that have been uh, taking place through EOC, and um, I I believe there there was going to be a, another report coming back to council in terms of lessons learned, and, and so is that the sort of after action review that you're you're contemplating, sort of that, that, that went all around. Of, oh, okay, that's good, and. Yeah. Um, I was well aware of that, and I, I did uh, discuss that with the CAO. And I think that I think it'd be appropriate that we just kind of get through and, and kind of get back to kind of full, um, you know, kind of full return to normalcy, and then kind of we then we can kind of close the book, open it back up again, and look at it. I mean, all of our um, applications and reimbursements from EMBC for all the costs. Um, for having the EOC at a level two open. Um, there's a lot of great work done by our, our finance folks and, and Deputy Harmon. Uh, I believe it was in excess of, you know, all of that was paid for to the tune of $325,000. I think when all it was all said and done, Mike, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was only, you know, three or $4,000 that was, uh, I don't know, rejected or, or questioned by EMBC in respect to our um, expense reimbursement. So, and that just was paid, I think, weeks ago. <laughs> so it's a long process um, to kind of get a, 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 you know, finality on that. But that that's my intent is to bring that report forward. Let's target November for reality sake, and we'll go from there. I, I wasn't thinking so much of the, the financial aspect. I was thinking more of, um, you know, our practices and processes. And so like in terms of, you know, from the beginning, wh what did we do and what did we kind of stumble with? So so next time we're gonna do this or that. And I guess also maybe this is more for, for Randy in terms of, you know, you talked about the, the number, you know, uh, the number of things that we might uh, continue to do, um, whether that would be part of it as well, um, that after action review. 
uh, in terms of things we're going to carry forward. And like you were saying, you know, crises like this make us do things differently. And it might be nice to highlight to the community that, yeah, this was a rough time for everybody, but here, here's a number of good things that came out of it and that we're going to continue uh, to do to improve services. So just a thought there. No, uh, if I could speak to that. Yeah, there might be, um, yeah, there's, there's elements, I think, that, uh, of that that we could certainly incorporate uh, into, the, into, uh, into a final, uh, final report. Um, I think there's going to be some elements of, of, of you know, um, what, we, what, we, um, what we still maintain going forward. Um, that'll come forward to council sooner and later, especially if we're looking at uh, revisiting our council procedures bylaw and that sort of thing. So there's elements that still will come forward. But, uh, you know, reflecting on a final report, you know, into the chief's point around timing associated with that, and, and both he and I talked about it, as he pointed out, and we're mindful of, of um, you know, council, you know, this being a valuable uh, sort of a summary of, of our, um, our COVID experience as an organization, and uh, and uh, and you know what are the and what were the challenges and all of that. Um, but you know, I think really to do it justice and to be able to sort of reflect on it appropriately, and we think about you know a, a well over a year long you know time frame for what we what uh, transpired through through COVID, and um, seeing three different waves and and and. Um, Seeing restarts and pullbacks and 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 uh, and all of those things, seeing uh, different levels of the uh, the EOC uh, and uh, and all of that, um, there's a lot to reflect on, and mm -hmm. um, and I think sometimes it just takes uh, it takes a you know a bit of separation from uh, the end of the event to to the point of being able to uh, to uh, really uh, put all of that together and uh, and. Uh, and think about all the different components and elements, uh, and as I said, do it, do it, do it a level of justice, right? As part of it. So, yeah, we'll 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 definitely work on that, uh, but uh, it's it's going to take some time to put together for sure. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you. I think it's also important to mention that a lot of these people have been going full out for uh, 16 months. They're going to need a little bit of a breather to uh, recharge. You implying we get a holiday? What really is madness? Yes. Well, there's burnout in the organization, and that has to be acknowledged and uh, dealt with. No, that's trust me. We're you know we're we're all and and you know some a lot of departments were running short staffed and are still short staffed. You know pre pre COVID. So yeah, again, it'd be nice to get a, a couple of weeks off and as Randy says, kind of refocus before we we, we do that. But again, it, it's still very much on our. Uh, on our task list and to, to kind of bring forward that. So whether it's the end of this year, or early next year, it, it's, it will happen. Um, I think now it's a, it's a great time. We'll just uh, open it up to, to a round table. And if there's any questions, concerns going forward from, from the group, please, uh, please let me know. Looking, I'm not, I'm not seeing a raft of hands shooting up here. This is a, always a good thing. So that, uh, if there are no, uh, nothing, I'll, I'll reach out to our friends in the RCMP. Everything's good there, Wayne? Still on the line? Yep, uh, I'm here, Brett. Yeah, everything's good. I did send an email um, <clears throat> last night about uh, Canada Day events. I don't, I haven't been sort of in meetings all morning. So I don't know if we have anything happening on Canada Day or or whether somebody's replied to me. I did respond, uh, uh, Wayne, on that. And um, okay. yeah, there's um, there um, there's uh, we, the only the only Canada Day event that uh, that we're aware of is um, associated with the Mary Winsphere Center, and that's their their basically their own event that uh, they're uh, they're hosting. And it's it's to be honest, it's uh, it's uh, it's a virtual uh, sort of uh, event. Uh, it's it consists of uh, Pre-recorded messages and uh, and um, and that sort of thing and uh, and uh, I think they've got a, a, an arrangement with Czech TV to uh, to um, 
that'll uh, that'll go on check on on Canada Day and uh, and other than that, uh, there's no there's no events that are planned indoors or or outdoors uh, that uh, as I said we're we're aware of. Okay, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Yeah, and I guess the only thing that you know, I don't know if if uh, if Wayne has as as noted it yet, um, but I, I have been speaking with my colleagues in, in the ambulance service, and it definitely we're going to anticipate or see is as these easings of restrictions um, come more and more prevalent, and people are out and about. You know, they've seen a massive. Um, we haven't seen it in Sydney. Uh, but they've seen a massive increase in uh, requests for emergency services just as people get out and kind of there's a there's a pent up demand to <laughs> get out and cut loose and just the amount of you know people are kind of coming out of hiding um, they've really noticing it in, in Victoria and Vancouver and it's, it's it's been evidenced by you know ambulance wait times of two or three hours in in, in metro centers so um, we haven't seen it here yet. I think that's probably, you know, somewhat indicative of our demographic, but I wouldn't be surprised. And we, again, we're all, we're all tired and, and burnt out, but we're, you know, internally our, our plan is to look at how we can, you know, deal with some fairly higher than normal call volumes, you know, come August, September, uh, based on the fact that everyone's out and about and, you know, we're kind of want to make up for lost time. <laughs> Sometimes that involves alcohol and other things and that drives our call volume. So um, they're already seeing that in a bunch of places. So it's just something that we're aware of. So I just wanted to kind of let you know that that's something we're, we're planning for at least or doing our best to plan for. Yeah, sounds good, Brett. Um, I, I think my my first eye opening to as things open up um, what we saw, you know, as as uh, some activities resume that we do criminal record checks here for volunteers, and we're just seeing like an enormous spike in that in the last uh, since you know the the June fifteenth announcement and the and the previous announcement. So yeah, I think we should should expect that we're going to see spikes in. In, in multiple areas for sure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's again, it's uh, after what we've gone through, it's probably uh, an expected issue and it's, you know, it's, it's better than what we've gone through, but it's just uh, something we have to, you know, if we, we, we can't fail to plan because we know if, you, if it's anticipated, you know, you have, you have to be prepared to deal with it. So just wanted to highlight that to this group. And if there's nothing else, um, I'll uh, see if there's a motion to adjourn out there. Someone will throw their hand up. There we go. Thank you, sir. Um, and uh, we'll look at the scheduling for the next meeting just based on uh, when we had this meeting. And um, I think it's best we kind of remains fluid um, in respect to um, what's going on uh, from reopening and planning. But uh, we'll commit to get something out to this group uh, in the next couple of weeks in respect of proposed timing um, for the next meeting. And uh, I thank you all for your time today. Thanks, Brad. Thanks. Thank you.